Okay, we are doing our last set of notes for this unit. So we'll be looking for a test next week. So we're going to talk about ways to prove that triangles are congruent. All right, so there are several different methods or theorems is what we call them um, to prove that triangles are congruent, which means all three sides are congruent to corresponding sides in another triangle and all three angles in one triangle are congruent to the corresponding angles in the other triangle. But you don't have to show all six things. You could just show one of these special ways that we have it. So the first one we're going to talk about is side, 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 or SSS. And what that means is I have three pairs of congruent sides. So that would look like this being congruent to this, this side congruent to this side, and this side congruent to this side. That information alone would show that those two triangles are congruent, implying that all three corresponding angles in one triangle are congruent to those in the other. Right? So side, side, side would show that those two triangles are congruent. The next theorem is side angle side, or SAS. Okay? Two sides and one included angle are congruent. Included is important. Okay, So what that could look like is if I have a side congruent to one side, and another side congruent to one side, and the angle in between those congruent sides is equal. Then those two triangles are congruent. So if you kind of think about it, you're going to side, angle, side on both side, angle, side, and you're crossing that, and that's why it's called SAS. That set of three pieces of information is enough to prove the entire triangle on the left is congruent to the entire triangle on the right, meaning those leftover sides and angles are also congruent to the corresponding ones in the other triangle. Another one is ASA, okay, angle side angle. So two angles and an included side are congruent. Okay, so included again means in between. So if I talk about two angles being congruent, say I have this angle congruent to this angle, and I have this angle being congruent to this angle, the side in between those congruent angles needs to be congruent to be ASA. Okay, and that again means those two triangles are entirely congruent, and that means the leftover information that's not marked is congruent from one triangle to the other. The next theorem is AAS. Okay, um, two angles and the side opposite of them are congruent. So if I have this angle, and I have congruent to this angle, and I have this angle congruent to this angle, this side is congruent. Okay. And so if you notice, if I trace it, it's angle, angle, side, okay? And those can be reversed. Like this could be SAA, and that would be okay, okay? That would be okay. All right, so that is angle, angle, side, or side, angle, angle. If I trace it, side, angle, angle. And those would be congruent. Therefore, all their corresponding parts are congruent. Hypotenuse leg is the only one we have that has two pieces of information, but really it does have three. Um, it has to be a right triangle first. If it's a right triangle and my hypotenuse, the hypotenuses are congruent to each other and one of their legs is congruent to each other, then those two triangles are entirely congruent to each other. But it has to be a right angle and that. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So if you notice, as an angle being the right angle and side side, the only time you can have angle side side is if it's a right angle. Okay, any angle that's not a right angle doesn't get angle side side. Okay. So we can prove that we have congruent sides, one, if it's given. If we have definition of a midpoint, so a midpoint is a piece of information that's either drawn for us in a diagram or stated in the instructions, that creates two congruent segments. And the reflexive property meaning something's congruent to itself. So those can help us with congruent sides. Congruent angles, again, if it's given, if they tell you it's congruent, then that works. Vertical angles, if you remember that from previous unit, those are congruent. Um, when we have parallel lines, alternate interior angles and corresponding angles are congruent. And angle bisector, kind of like when we talked about that definition midpoint, well, an angle bisector creates two congruent angles. So we have a lot of information to get congruent angles. Okay. Um, CPCTC. It says that all the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So earlier when I mentioned, if I have these three pieces of information, so for example, look here, if I have just these three things in hypotenuse leg, but that means my two triangles are congruent, then all the corresponding parts are congruent. Anything left over is congruent. So if we look at this, they're telling me in this congruent statement that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So what does that mean for their corresponding parts? It means that segment AB is congruent to 
if you look, A, B, M, D, E are the first of those set of three letters. So they are corresponding and congruent. So I can mark those, A, B, D, E. I also know that B, C is congruent to E, F. If you look again at that congruent statement, B, C, and E, F are in the same position. And A, C and D, F are in the same position in that congruent statement, so they're equal. And then as for angles, angle A and angle D are in the same position, so they're congruent. In the congruent statement, not necessarily triangles, because the triangles can be rotated, so look at your congruent statement. Angle B is congruent to angle E, and angle C is congruent to angle F. So then we can go through and finish our diagram. BC was congruent to EF, and AC was congruent to DF. Angle D and angle A, angle B and angle E, and angle C and angle F, and use those congruent markings. So let's go through some examples. So we are going to look at sets of triangles, and we're going to determine whether or not they can be proven congruent, and then we'll state why. So using side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 angle S, angle, angle, side, or hypotenuse leg, and we'll write our answer in the box. So if we look at our information, if you notice on number one, we have this angle congruent to this angle, and then we have these angles congruent to these angles, and then this is a reflexive property there. A side is always congruent to itself. If you notice that I trace, I have angle, side angle, and on the other side, I have angle, side angle. Okay, so these can be proven congruent by angle, side angle. Okay, again, that congruent side is sandwiched in between that set of congruent angles, and that's why angle, side angle works for that. If you look at number two, we have a set of congruent sides here and here, and another set of congruent sides here and here. And then we have this reflexive side, the one that's congruent to itself. And I like to call it the duh property, because of course things are congruent to themselves, but the reflexive property is there. And if you notice, I don't have any angles marked, but I do have all three sides in one triangle congruent to corresponding sides in another triangle. So for that reason, these are congruent by side, side, side. All right, if you look at the next triangles, you notice I have an angle with one marking, angle with two markings, and then a side. So it's an angle, angle, side on this triangle. And on the other triangle, I have exactly the same thing. I have angle, angle, side. So these are congruent by angle, angle, side. The side is not in between the angles, but the corresponding angles, even though rotated um, and reflected, they, they do match. Angle four, if you notice, I have a right angle. So that should automatically make me think I might be looking for hypotenuse leg, like on the previous page. So in order to do hypotenuse leg, I have to have a hypotenuse and a leg also congruent. So if you notice, the hypotenuse uses a reflexive property. It is congruent to itself. And then I have this extra leg here. So because it has a right angle, the hypotenuse is congruent to itself, and those extra legs are congruent to itself. These two triangles are congruent by hypotenuse leg. The next one, on number five, there is added information. We do have this side congruent to this side, and this side congruent to this side. And vertical angles tell me that this angle is congruent to that. But if you look, I have side, side, angle, and or angle, side, side. And we talked about the only way to use angle, side, side is if it's a right angle. And that is not a right angle. So these are not congruent. I'll just use this symbol. They're not congruent, OK? There's not enough information as it's given because what we the information we have is not a theorem, OK? Because again, it's side, side, angle. That's not a theorem, OK? It only works for right angles. All right, number six, parallel lines often are very, very useful, OK? So if we have these two sets of parallel lines, one, they're sides that are congruent. We also have the congruent angles. And then we have these congruent angles because our parallel lines theorem say that those are corresponding and corresponding angles have the same measure. So if you look, my sides that are congruent are sandwiched in between angles. So that would be an angle side angle. If you look at number seven, and we'll just go through all of these because they don't take very long um, and it gives you a lot of extra practice. Number seven, it has this reflexive side congruent to itself. And if you look, I have side, angle, side on this triangle and side, angle, side on this triangle. So side, angle, side. And number eight, we have that reflexive side congruent to itself. And if you notice, there's no angles, but all three sides in one triangle are congruent to all three sides in the other triangle. So these two match up, these two match up, and this matches up to itself. 
So these two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. And that's really helpful because that implies all the angles then are congruent using CPCTC. Number nine, if you notice, these right angles are good hints for hypotenuse leg potentially. So my hypotenuse is definitely equal to the other hypotenuse. Or again, if you remember um, previous lessons, hy the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. And that's how I know that's a hypotenuse or it's the longest side okay, of a right triangle. So I have my hypotenuse. And then I have this extra leg and this extra leg. So I can use hypotenuse leg. Number 10, if you notice, we have vertical angles again. And those are ones you're going to have to add in that information. It's not given to you. But we are given that these two angles are equal to each other and that these two sides are equal to each other. And if I trace the information I have, I have angle, angle, side, and I have angle, angle, side. Okay or um, side angle angle. All right, and number 11, we have this reflexive property, but if you notice, I only have two pieces of information. I have angle and side. The only time you get two pieces of information is when one of, when you have a right angle with two extra pieces of information, okay? So um, you don't have enough information with this, because that's just side angle, and we don't have anything that's side angle, okay? So this is not congruent. Last one, we, again, we have those parallel lines, and those parallel lines are congruent, so we have side, side, and then what parallel lines do is they give us congruent angles. So these two angles, our alternate interior angles are equal, and these two angles, are alternate interior angles, so they're equal. So there's actually several right answers because of that. If you notice, I could do side, angle, side, because I'm sandwiching that angle between these sides, but... I also have a side, the side and the side are sandwiched between two angles. So I could also do ASA, okay? Um, and you could even go farther than that. You have vertical angles here. And so you have a lot of possibilities on that too. But again, that would kind of result in an angle side angle as well. Um, but you could then take it angle side, angle, angle side. So you get a lot of them. The only one you don't have, I think, is SSS or hypotenuse leg because you can also do angle-angle side. So some of them with parallel lines, you can get a lot of extra information sometimes. All right, make sure you keep up with your homework. And again, you are going to have a test coming up next week.